Tomas Keck here from Wild New England. And today we are going to be going over three different super telephoto zooms. Now, all of these lenses are priced above $1,000. So they are all very high end. Um, the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter is in its SP line. The 100 to 400 millimeter Canon is in its L glass line and the Sigma is in its sports line. So all of these lenses are in that next generation of quality that each one of these sellers offers. Quick disclaimer here, all of these lenses are good. If you have one of these lenses, if you're planning to buy one of these lenses, you will not be disappointed. This isn't meant to be bashing any one of these lenses, so don't feel bad if you have them already. But this video is meant to help you understand the benefits and the negatives of these lenses when you compare them against one another. All of these lenses are also at different price points. The Tamron is almost half the price of the Canon, and the Sigma falls a little bit in between, about at the 2000 range, maybe a little bit higher. So all of these lenses are different price points, so please keep that in mind when we're looking at the specs and looking at the different image qualities that each of these lenses offers. This video is brought to you by Milford Photo. Milford Photo is a store located in Milford, Connecticut. It offers online shopping and an extremely large stock that you will not find anywhere else in Connecticut. They are licensed by Canon, Tamron, Sigma, Nikon, Sony, you name it, on selling different bodies and different lenses. They also offer personalized packages where if you want to get a specific camera body with a specific camera lens, they can set up bundles and they can work with you. So if you are interested in buying one of these lenses, buying a new camera, check out Milford Photo today. So let's go right into it. I'm gonna look at each one of these lenses and we will go across the board on different comparisons and different um, strengths and weaknesses of each category. So let's go over build quality real quick. So I'm looking at the Tamron here. I, I, when I got first got this lens, um, this was, it was really nice seeing that this lens was very high quality. It, it's made out of carbon fiber, the mount is metal, it's even weather sealed. So that's a huge benefit if you're a wildlife or sports photographer who needs that reach, but you're going to be in places and areas that need that weather sealing, that need that extra protection against the rain and snow. Um, looking around here, you know, the Tamron ha has a very nice solid build, but it's not too heavy. This lens weighs in at about four and a half pounds. Um, so it's a very large lens. It offers a lot of reach, up to 600 millimeters is its highest focal length. And quite frankly, it's really light. I'm very, very nicely surprised. You can see here, you know, you have the lens mount, which is fully removable, by the way. And what's really cool about this lens mount is that it already has an Arca Swiss compatible dock on it. So if you have Arca Swiss type mounts that you would like to use, you don't have to worry about buying an extra adapter to go along with the Tamron mount. That is really, really cool. Here it is without its mount. I think it's probably about the same weight because the mount on this lens really does not weigh that much, which is a really, really cool um, additive. So that is the Tamron lens. One other thing to note, this lens, if, if you feel it, you can tell that it does have a fluorine coating that is meant to adhere to weather sealing um, standards and will also stop water droplets and other and dust and other stuff that may get on your lens sticking and affecting the operations of day-to-day -day use. So moving on to the Canon. The Canon is a much smaller lens as you can see. It is 400 millimeters. You may be wondering why I would be comparing a 400 millimeter with two 600 millimeters. You will see why in a bit. Stay tuned. So looking at this lens, this lens, as expected from Canon, is very, very solidly built. It is in the L glass line, as you can see by its red ring. So this lens, it has a, it's gray. You'll notice it's a different color than the other two lenses. It's really solid. Um, this lens prides itself off of its weather sealing. It's weather sealed just like the Tamron with a nice metal bracketed mount. Um, and it's, it's, it's a really, really good design. Um, I really like the Canon design because it's really small, it's really compact. Interestingly enough, it's the same weight as the Tamron. If you pick it up, you'll actually think it, it weighs heavier simply because it's smaller, so it's a little bit more massive than the Tamron is. 
So again, Canon's always really good with their build quality, especially with their L glass. So yeah, I would give that a really, really good score. So you do not have to worry about Canon with their lens quality. So looking at the Sigma here, the Sigma is a whole nother level. So this lens, um, even the lens hood itself is metal. You can probably hear it from here. Let's see. This is all metal. It has a rubberized front to the mount and this is really useful because a lot of people use the hood for two purposes. One, to block stray light uh, rays from affecting the image quality and two, to protect the lens from any damage that may happen. And I will say, this Sigma is built like an absolute tank. It is much heavier than the other lenses, which we will go into later, which um, will affect how you shoot. Um, but it is so well built that I am very, very impressed. It's mostly metal, if not carbon fiber in some places. As expected, it's also weather sealed. So this makes it again that you do not have to worry about sealing in any of these lenses. These are all weather sealed to protect from snow and rain. I can tell you from my use with it and from my impression with it right now that this lens is very, very solidly built and you will not have to worry about construction damages. So moving on to the different specs of each one of these lenses, the Tamron has a 95 millimeter filter size. So that means that you're going to have to buy a 95 millimeter filter if you end up buying a filter. Um, why would you buy a filter, you may ask? Well, filters come in a, you know, a variety of different uh, types, modes, all designed for different purposes. I mostly use a filter as a first responder against possible damages. So this is meant to protect the actual lens glass that is inside. Um, but it also acts as a UV protector where the filter will help improve image quality by blocking out, again, stray rays of UV light. Um, looking at the other specs, the Tamron has a bunch of different switches here. It has a lock switch, which will prevent you from zooming in. Okay, so it locks at 150 millimeters, which is nice and handy if you're on the move and you don't want the lens to slowly fall and zoom out on its own, which is kind of cool because this lens actually isn't doing it and I've been using this lens for months. There's a different type of lock called the ring lock. So if I am at, let's say, 350 millimeters, or maybe let's make it even more interesting. Let's say I'm, I'm at 325 millimeters. I can flip that lock up and the lens will not zoom in or out. This is really cool. And this is a feature that Canon nor Sigma has. So that is something to consider. Um, this is, comes in really handy. So say I'm walking around and I don't really wanna use this lock because if there is a bird flying overhead, if I stumble into an owl in the woods, I do not wanna to have to worry about taking my lens out, you know, trying to click that lock and either scaring the bird away by my jerky movements, by the sound or whatever. This is really easy because I can quickly just take it out, unlock it and start zooming in and taking my photos as either the birds flying by or whatever. So looking at the switches here, it has its standard switches. It has its vibration compensation, which is up to four and a half stops, which is really good. Um, it has three vibration compensation modes. Number one is standard. Number two is panning. And number three is the stabilization when the shutter releases. So you will not be seeing number three through the optical viewfinder. This is something that happens on its own. And in the number three setting, that's when you will find that the four and a half stops come into play. I believe number one is around three and a half to four stops, but number three is the best mode, if you will. I always prefer to be a number one. I don't really need number three, but if you do have jittery hands, number three is something to consider. Then you have its, a, you know, AF autofocus switches, and then you have its full to 10 meters to 2.2 meters. So this is how far from the subject you are away from. This is what tells the lens where to focus. Is that subject within the two and a half to 10 meters that that parameter is at? Or is it at 10 meters to infinity? Is the subject really far away? So generally on birding, you wanna set it to 10 meters to infinity. But 
if you are shooting macro, you can get away with shooting at 10 meters to 2.2 meters. And Tamron prides itself with being able to shoot in really, really close. I believe it is 2.2 meters is the closest you can be. So that is really cool. That is really good for a telephoto lens. The max aperture on this lens is f6.3. That is actually a fairly general aperture, minimum aperture for um, lenses of this size that are in this price range. The Sigma Contemporary is the same thing. The Sigma Sport is the same thing. And I'm sure there are other lenses that are the same thing. I believe even the Tamron 400 millimeter and the Sigma 400 millimeter are also at f6.3. So that is something to consider. Um, it can zoom all the way out you know, to 600 millimeters, as you know. Um, all the way back at 150 millimeters, the maximum aperture is f5, so that is also something to consider. As I've stated before, there is a moisture resistance here. It has a fluorine coating. Um, and then within the lens body as well, you have nine aperture blades and 21 elements to help you get the best bokeh that you can possibly get. And as mentioned before, you have this Arca Swiss adapter already on the lens. So if you're shooting with Arca Swiss and are worrying about having to buy yet another $150 high quality Arca Swiss mount, you will not have to worry about that. Moving on, now we have the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter. Now again, this is a much smaller lens and it only shoots at 400 millimeters. Now you may be thinking that this puts it at a disadvantage between the Tamron and the Sigma. Well, we will go into later into more detail that this lens's quality is so good that if you have a nice um, sized megapixel sensor and you can crop the image down and compare that image to a Tamron or a Sigma lens, you will find that this lens is as sharp, if not sharper, than the other two lenses. Um, specifically the Tamron. This lens is crazy, crazy sharp. You also have to remember, you get what you pay for. I live by that motto when it comes to buying camera gear. So if you're spending $1,400 or less on a Tamron lens, you should expect that when you spend and drop $2,200 on a Canon lens, you're going to expect a jump in image quality. So similar to the Tamron lens, this lens also has a sort of lock, so you can set a lock to any particular focal length that you desire. Canon has a little bit of a different setup, which I actually don't like as much, but I understood why they had to put it there. They have a ring that tightens and loosens at any focal length that you may want. So when I have this in storage, I tighten it and you can no longer move the ring to set your focal length at. This can be done at any range and any focal length, which is pretty cool. This is 399 millimeters. Um, and now we're at 400 millimeters, so it's pretty cool. Um, on the rest of the lens, you have all of your traditional switches. You have modes on the image stabilizer, one, two, and three. They're pretty much the same as the Tamron's. In fact, I think the Tamron inspired their settings from the Canon, where you have number one, which is standard. You have number two, which is panning. So if there's a bird flying by and I want to get that nice steady panning shot, whether it's video or it's photography, you can set it to number two and you will be able to get that shot nice and sharp based on the lens's settings. Then you have number three, which is the same exact setting as the Tamron lens in which we discussed in the past. The image stabilization is now only turned on when you when the shutter is pulled down and the camera starts taking photos. So you will not see it through the viewfinder, but you will see it in the results. So to go into the weather sealing of this lens, Canon prides itself with this lens's weather sealing. It's very, 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 very well done. Where this lens, you can probably drop it in a, a vat of acid and it'll come out unscathed. Do not do that. You do not want to do that, on, especially on a $2,200 lens. But they can guarantee that you can put this through a, a ton of different conditions, whether you're in snowstorm, whether you are a surfing photographer, whether you are in the middle of a rainstorm shooting sports. You will be able to take this lens out with a peace of mind that nothing is going to happen to it and you will not have any damages. 
So that is something that's really cool to consider. Like the Tamron, it has a fluorine coating, which will enable it so that you will not have any moisture or dust that will stick to the lens and affect the integrity of the build of the lens. The mount is not Arca Swiss, it is fairly standard, but it also is removable, similar to the Tamron's which will come into play when you compare these two lenses with the Sigma, which you cannot remove. This lens also has 21 elements in it and has nine blades for the aperture. So you, you are going to be getting these nice, smooth, beautiful photos, depending on the distance of the subject from the lens and depending on the distance from the background of the subject, you'll be getting some really, really nice, smooth, creamy backgrounds, which is really, really gonna come into play if you're a professional trying to get those professional results. Um, this is also considering that this is a 400 millimeter lens. So you, everything is gonna be a little bit more compact, especially because this lens is shooting at 400 millimeters at f5.6. So the low light capabilities of this lens are gonna be much better than the Sigma and much better than the Tamron, purely because you have that extra, almost full stop of light that will become, be able to come through this lens. This lens is also sharpest or very sharp at f5.6. You know, that is something you have to worry about with large telephoto zooms like this, is that sometimes the image is not going to be sharpest at its widest aperture. So the fact that at its widest aperture in the Canon, it will enable it so you do not have to focus about shooting in low light conditions. I was in a forest shooting barred owls. And if you know anything about barred owls, they like wet, dark, deep woods that are very, very hard on your camera gear. You are going to have to be shooting at high ISOs and really have to be lucky with the light. I was really fortunate to be shooting with this lens because I did not have to worry about light as much and I was able to shoot in really, really tough and dark conditions, which was really cool and my images still came out razor, razor sharp. We will be going more into the image quality after we go over the overview of the Sigma lens. So again, looking at the Sigma lens, this lens is the largest and heaviest of these two. It comes in at six pounds um, and it is super, super heavy. If you are a sports photographer, if you are someone who shoots with a monopod or a tripod at all times and do not have to worry about carrying this lens around, stop this video and go ahead and buy yourself the Sigma. The Sigma is an insanely, insanely sharp lens that brought to sporting events, especially outdoor sporting events, you're, you are going to be getting some crazy, crazy good results. The thing is, because this lens is so heavy, I found it that when I compared um, all three of these lenses in the field that I wasn't as apt to be excited about taking this lens out purely because it's so heavy. When I am out in the field, I am running and gunning. I am running around the woods, being very patient, you know, spending hours out in the field trying to get the shot that I desire most. When shooting like that, I need to have nice light equipment that enables me to be able to walk around without having an extra pain in my shoulder. And interestingly enough, even though the Sigma is only about two more pounds than these other two lenses, it really, really put a weight on my shoulder. And I felt that at some points, I just felt like packing up and finishing up shooting, which is a terrible feeling to be shooting like that when you wanna be getting the photos that you want, but you don't wanna keep shooting in pain and having this extra pain on your shoulder. This will weigh you down eventually, unfortunately. Um, but again, if you are someone who shoots with a monopod or a tripod and you don't have to worry about the extra weight, you will not be disappointed with this lens. So going into the different specs of this lens, this lens is a 105 millimeter filter size. So the filter is going to be a little bit more expensive than the other lenses. However, I will say this, if you are buying a $2,000, a $2,200, a $1,400 lens, you wanna be buying a nice filter so that you get the best image quality and you also protect the lens. Don't be afraid to put away that extra money to protect your lens. If you're already putting in over $1,000 in anything, what's a hundred more when it comes to protecting your lens's integrity and its safety? So looking at this lens, again, 105 millimeter size, and you have all of your um, locks just like these two have. Um, so it has one lock switch right here that can lock at any of the marked 
parts of the lens. So for example, I can lock at 150, 180, 200, 250, 300, 400, 500, and 600 millimeters. Um, you cannot lock in any of the in-between setting, which is something to consider when comparing these lenses. Fortunately, the range is set where you don't really need to go in between these settings. These are all really, really good, well-placed focal lengths for you to be shooting at. Um, it has a quick release where if you have it set at 300 millimeters and the winning goal is about to be scored and you need that extra reach at maybe, I don't know, 500 millimeters, you can go there. You don't have to quickly, frantically find the switch, uh, you know, switch it off and then zoom in. Interestingly enough, this lens is designed where you don't really actually use the um, focal ring here. You, you are more apt to use the push and pull technique. Now, this is not something I'm acclimated to, but if you are acclimated to that style, you'll be very happy to find that the Sigma has designed the lens so that you can grip it, so that you have that extra handle and this extra little you know, nub right here, if you will, that will enable it so you can push and pull all you want. Um, so that is really, really cool. You also have all these settings here, the basic OS settings, um, you got number number one and number two. Now number one, I believe, is just all purpose and number two is for panning. They do not have a number three. You also have your focal range focusing types and you have your autofocus and manual focus settings here. Um, you also have custom settings that you can, you can customize your lens to and you can switch number one, number two, or completely off. It is totally up to you. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, it should be noted that the mount cannot be taken off. So, you know, it's going to add to the extra weight and because, you know, everything is so nicely built, unfortunately, there's a ton of weight on this lens. So that, that is just something you are going to have to consider. I'm going to stress again the weather sealing of this lens. Sigma prides itself, similar to Canon, where this lens is weather sealed to a tooth, where you can dump this lens in a vat of acid or water, or whatever weird liquid you have available in your house, and it should be totally fine. Again, I do not recommend doing this, but that, that is something to consider, that if you like to shoot in very, very um, dicey conditions, you will not have to worry about this lens at all. Similar to the Tamron, its max aperture is at f6.3. Now, unlike the Tamron, this lens is razor sharp at 6.3, nine aperture blades, but it also has 24 elements in the lens, which is probably why its quality is so good and probably why this lens is so much heavier. There is more glass that is put into this lens in order to get that nice sharp um, output that you desire. So let's go on to using this lens in the field. The Tamron is really, really nice to use in the field. It's very light, it's very versatile, and you can put, you can just put the camera body on and will not have to worry about the weight weighing you down. It's also nice and thin and small. So again, it is versatile and it will enable you to be able to, if you have long fingers or normal size fingers, whatever the case, you will be able to quickly zoom in and out with the focal ring. The zoom lock really comes in handy. And quite frankly, I had a great time using this lens in the winter photographing owls. In case you don't know what I'm doing, I am a nature photographer primarily, and I'm currently shooting a documentary. So I need nice lenses that have great focal ranges that will enable me to be able to capture wildlife in the field. If you are a wildlife photographer, you can empathize with me and the fact that wildlife are not very compromising and they do not like to be taken photos of usually. So having the lens with this range really, really helps me get the shots that I want. Um, this lens is not sh that sharp at f6.3. So when I, when I use a very high density uh, megapixel sensor like the Canon 90D, which is also a crop sensor, I needed to up it to f8 in order to get sharp results where I can then take those images, sharpen them in post-processing and get some really, really nice results. The Canon lens, I really, really liked. This lens is nice, small, and compact, and you can bring this around anywhere without having to you know, make room for it. And quite frankly, I had a really, really good time with this lens. 
I went on an expedition and an assignment to try to photograph loons in New Hampshire. I teamed up with the Loon Preservation Committee and I documented loon nesting sites. Now this lens was awesome for that because I had to be out in a kayak. I needed good weather sealing in case anything bad happened I, and I also needed something that wasn't too big and cumbersome so it did not affect, um, you know, I didn't want to fall off my kayak quite frankly. So ha having a lens that was able to quickly put in my kayak and was at that size where it was nice and easy to use was really, really convenient for me. This lens is also insanely, insanely sharp. I was able to get some really good results from this, even from that very brief three or four days I was out in New Hampshire. So this was a really, really good lens for that purpose. This lens also, again, enables it so you can shoot in very low light conditions. I was shooting this kingfisher who was on this branch and he was even backlit and I was still able to get some really, really nice detail out of the subject because I was shooting at f5.6 compared to f8 or compared to 6.3. Now to you that may not sound like a big difference, but in the lens world, adding just a little bit more to the size of your aperture can make the difference between a sharp image and between a washed out or a blurry image. So it's really, really nice to have something like that in this case. This also enables it so I don't have to have my ISO that high. And to note, ISO is not the contributor to the amount of noise you have in your photo. It is a sign that your camera sensor is not getting enough light. So because my ISO was so low, I, it told me that my camera was getting enough light to get really nice sharp images. So I was getting great results from shooting these loons, great results from shooting owls, and the extra focal length that the other two lenses had wasn't as big as, as an advantage as I thought because since this lens is so sharp, shooting at a 33 and above megapixel camera enabled me to really crop that image down and still get some really, really nice results out of it. So that was really, really nice to see. So far, this was probably the lens I preferred the most because it wasn't as heavy as the Sigma, but it still produced very, very sharp results. But it was as light as the Tamron, but it was a lot sharper. So this was a lens that I preferred most in my days of shooting. Moving on to the Sigma, the image quality, again, was insanely good. The thing was, I just did not get to use it as much as I wanted. Sometimes because the lens was so heavy, it was just really hard to get the photo of that bird flying. If you are a nature photographer, you understand that when the bird's flying by, there's a moment where you put the lens up and your camera up and you have to try to find it, right? Because this lens was so heavy, it was kind of hard to find that bird. So anyway, the results, I'm gonna once again say that any of these lenses are great. You are going to be happy with the Tamron, you're going to be happy with the Canon, and you're gonna be happy with the Sigma Sport. You can't go wrong with any of these lenses. It all just matters of how much you end up wanting to spend. All these lenses are great for their own uses, and all these lenses offer a lot where you are going to be getting great images no matter what lens you use. As a result, if I had to pick one of these lenses for me personally, for my shooting style, I would go with this with the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter. I just had such a great time shooting with this lens because it was small, it was compact, and most importantly, it was razor sharp where I could even crop any of my photos down to a point where it was, it was amazing of how sharp this lens was. I'll just say it like that, it was, it was great. And I really noticed the quality with Canon L lens and how much they put into it. Anyway, this was Tomas Keck. I hope you enjoyed this review and going through all three of these lenses. Like and subscribe on this video. It will tell me if I should dish out more videos like this. And I hope this video helped you with your camera decisions. This is Tomas Keck from Wild New England, signing off.